is going to get printed on a printer. And what they print nowadays basically are three different units, three different functions of DNA and RNA. One is producing light of defined color, one is producing chemical substances, and one is producing digital sequences of uh, genome in a way that you have like the, the base pairs in a row and each base pair has a certain frequency to switch it on. And it, it's like, like the old uh, way to dial the telephone, the frequency. You make a dial and it makes do 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 and in this line these base pairs are kind of um, opened for a signal and when the last one was hit by the right tone then the sequence behind is activated. This is what they do in, in, in extreme genetic engineering. And this, is, this has a quality of, an, of, an, of an, a retrovirus that can be activated by a um, radio signal. Yes. All you need is the right line of, of frequencies and you can activate either a light function, this is a psychotronic weapon, Yes, now or a this, chemical this function. This is why we're getting all these LED lights. Uh, it's called Wi Fi. Instead of having mm -hmm. Wi Fi on a, on a, on a 2.5 gigahertz or a 5.5 gigahertz signal, which mm -hmm. is what we use in microwaves to boil water. In other words, to transfer the transferring digital signals into the water system to our water mm -hmm. memory. Uh, you can do it optically straight into the brain, mm -hmm. even with flickering LED bulbs. Mm -hmm. No, no. This is this is ba basically the possibilities. That's from from what is possible in science. Now we go to the whistleblowing, and we have one document in Germany that nobody dares to publish. I haven't seen the entire one. I miss the page with the signature. But this is by a guy who developed this type of technology for the intelligence community. He was responsible for this technology and development. And he said a, a number in this paper, a number of a part of explaining how it works, which is basically the thing that are known if you're into extreme genetic engineering, you know these ways of dealing with it. He said there's a deactivation code to take the system down. He said it's airborne since 2003 in Europe. We're all infected by this. Now, let's get this absolutely clear. A deactivation code for what? Our genetics? For the synthetic RNA they sprayed. So they've sprayed something? Since 2003, they spray synthetic RNA connected, connected to lipopeptides that infiltrate our human system, connect to our cell, to our uh, DNA. So it's in our genetic, but it does not reproduce because it's RNA. If it would have been DNA, it would uh, hit to the next generation. RNA stops in the infected being, it doesn't go further. So that would be all the current people around? Yes. He, he said it had been tested in the last Iraq war. This was the, the war was only done for the purpose of testing the system. Now you're talking about the, uh, the most recent one. Yes, with, with, with the, the, the junior. Yeah. 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 And they sprayed that in Iraq. And they sprayed it in, in Iraq. And uh, we had single news, for example, that they fought back the Iraqi army by utilizing microwave weapons that gave them the feeling that the skin burns. This was in public media, in, in, in mainstream media. And this is not because the microwave weapon had the intensity to make it burn. This is more because the RNA was triggered to create the sensation of burn. So this had a kind of agent within the bodies of the Iraqi army. They tested all other aspects of it. And um, from the text he says you have these psychotronic weapons, making them give up, making them fall in love with the American soldiers, whatever, a, a long list of psychotronic functions. And you can make people sick, you can make them die of cancer after one year, you can make them die in six minutes, and you can make them die in six seconds if you want to. This is what he listed. And, um, but the most... Uh, most interesting thing from, from this paper is that he said that they spent 10 billion US 
and one, no, half a year, I think it was half a year, to optimize the cluster topology. And this is something, it, it sounds just like science fiction if you say it like this, but if you really think about it, if it is only about infecting humans with a virus-like synthetic RNA, you could give a damn about cluster topology. Cluster topology starts to, to become an interesting topic if this RNA cluster is supposed to carry a soul. Only then a soul or an artificial intelligence or whatever, an RNA. Um, so so th this is kind of the, the first time that I had an, an input, an idea of how do they turn people into biorobots. You have the RNA cluster within the air, sprayed in the air with a defined distance from RNA to RNA. And within the human body, the same RNA cluster is prolonged within the cells. And now, whatever is carried by these clusters, the artificial intelligence or a program or a soul, whatever this is, can travel from the dust into the human being. This is smart dust. And this is what they call smart dust. And now, uh, this is all kind of grad theory. Yeah, if you take the Morgellon topic, uh, Morgellon topic is, you find it described as a transhumanistic technology to extract light from the human body, turn it into a radio signal to read out what happens within the human, and opposite way to insert light, not a radio frequency to the human, to make him feel whatever you want to make him feel. If you take this Morgellon concept, if you take the the nanocrystals, the nanocrystal concept, and if you take um, all the other things, and then you look into some internal papers of the NASA. This is something that went online, I don't know when, uh, 2000 maybe, or a little bit earlier. It, it wasn't meant to be published. It was an internal lecture. Um, in, the, in the NASA facility in the United States. I like some... the way you say NASA. <laughs> Is that just your thick German accent or are you putting a Z in there intentionally? <laughs> No, it was not intentional, but it is like this. And, and they, they kind of inform each other about future strategic issues for warfare, projecting to the year 2025 with a subtitle, big subtitle, The Future is Now. And if you look through it, you find the concept of some sensor swarm, smart dust. You find nanotechs, which is identical to the Morgellon function. And you, and you find co-opted insects. So somewhere in the American in the American intelligence community, which seems to be uh, black magic inspired. Oh, well, there are certain individuals who say the U.S. Army has totally beat satanic since like the 1930s. Uh, sometimes I would say it looks like definitely the uh, intelligence the. the Army based intelligence community, especially whatever was founded by the uh, Tavistock Institute, which is CIA and Office of Naval Intelligence. Those are definitely black magic institutions. From their origin, going back to the Tavistock, I mean, this is Kara's partner and mine, as an interview, I guess, of her online. Um, but uh, NASA knows all the components and it is interlocked in the United States. If you go to Silicon Valley, you have three big buildings. One is Singularity University, with the founder Ray Kurzweil, who is dreaming about, in their interviews out there, where Kurzweil is dreaming about sending nanobots to other planets to harvest energy and matter to multiply the over in overall intelligence of the human machine civilization. Originally his words, and then he asked himself if, if there's a God that exists, and he says, not yet. Yeah. This is Ray Kurzweil. Now, next building from Singularity University, Transhumanistic Headquarters, is Google Headquarters, uh, where he now is uh, head developer, same Ray Kurzweil. And on the other side of the of the of the university is NASA headquarters, the one who is certifying the planes to spray, according to Kara's knowledge.
So all these members of this Black Brotherhood even sit on the same street as Mingus. And uh, I think it's it's kind of about. Does he feel fairly safe? Looks like. But that's because people don't understand the consequences, or are they high programmed already? Some people do understand the consequences. The Russians did understand the consequences of spraying the military compounds, which would have meant looting the harvest and falling under Monsanto, and they decided to stop spraying. And the NSA realized, I guess, that the CAA is a black magic unit, and the NSA, at least parts of it, is still into uh, American interests and the American um, actually human interests. Yes, so whatever. whatever. So uh, the answer on, or, or no, not the answer. Um, maybe in a reaction to realizing that whatever is happening there with following demonic or archon interests, um, the NSA downed Evergreen International. They downed the CAA spraying airline. And the, and the and the kind of little they say downed it, so they shut it down. Yes, NSA, NSA has one option. This is cutting money flow. If if, if, if the CAA wants the Congress, Congress to send troops to Iran, to Iran to start World War Three, and, and they are blackmailing members of the Congress, sending millions to them to vote for their interests, the NSA, the NSA is blocking the money flow. This is the only option they actually have. They don't want to enter this war.